Back to part two of this BMW and I've got some uh, some news. So I've got this IM608 here and finally we do have some codes. Um, some codes that I understand. Now obviously if you look at the code from the snap on we did have 36F000H and then slash something else. So now I realize that was the code without the H. And we have another one because I've done something here. But obviously going through uh, this car, I noticed a couple of things. This um, intake valve here where the motor is, it gets super, super hot. I don't know if that's normal. I never noticed, um, you know, throttle body or intake valve, whatever. Uh, getting this hot, it, it is close to 100 degrees. I mean, you can't keep your finger there for for more than a few seconds. 80 degrees, oh. 80 degrees. Definitely something not right. This engine is cold. Another thing that gets super hot is this solenoid for, I believe is the uh, cooling side of the EGR. And you have some vacuum lines as well there. This engine is cold. There's a hot spot there. Let's see. Let's see the temperature of that. Uh, let's see if I can catch it. That is. Oh, that's about 70 as well. Super hot. 66. Uh, what else? I took the EGR valve off. Because the lad that took the jar before, he didn't quite get the message. He removed the whole thing with the cooler and he didn't actually remove the valve itself. I removed it, as you could see in the first video, it works fine. Not, e not a problem there. Looking into this foot codes, uh, we have two now, which the first one that we couldn't clear and it was permanent is now intermittent. But And then we have the second one, 36F400, which is permanent. Um, every time you try to clear these faults, they come back straight away as intermittent and permanent. I don't know how the car is judging an issue with the air intake system because obviously it does that without the engine not running. Uh, all the figures that I can see on the live data, I uh, can't see anything wrong with anything. So anyway, I mean, there is an issue somewhere. But I haven't got that yet. Now, looking at these two faults, uh, I'm going to go to diagnose down here for the rescue, hopefully. And I've got this information here, look. Uh, so two of the faults that we have, so 36F000, 36F400. I haven't got the 600, but I've got the other two. And then if you scroll up, you see... This fault occurs as a consequential fault to other faults. Not all aftermarket diagnostic tools can be used to delete these fault codes. To delete this, uh, the fault codes run a control program via Easter. Checking the intake system. If the test is completed without faults, the fault codes can be deleted. This can be performed via OE diagnostic, remote diagnostics. Ugh. I have a friend of mine coming here uh, with an Easter. I don't know if we're going to be able to uh, run any OE diagnostic through the cloud or whatever. But I'm hoping uh, with the Easter we can do something. We can delete these faults or, or whatever. But I'm going to have to put this car uh, back together. This ended back, back, to get, back together. The EGR and everything else. Because... Uh, the ignition doesn't stay on anymore although i left it charging yesterday and when i got here it was showing fully charged and as you can see it's 80 percent uh 15 volts there taking about well on 1.9 amps not a lot is it but if i put the ignition on it doesn't stay on for very long and uh, I have to run the procedure to fit that EGR valve back in. 
and that mess has changed as well from red to orange now or umber and the mess has changed you know uh drive train uh, before it was red drive train drive carefully now is drive train see if we can get the message up again it's not even staying on but you can see the oh, there we go it's turned itself off so what i'm planning to do is run the procedure really quick put it in place really quick and ask my friend to put the bolts quickly so we don't damage the, the egr and then uh well i'm hoping starting the engine and run for a little bit we can actually work with vista you know because we're gonna have to have this ignition on all the time aren't we to do whatever we need to do so battery discharged start engine so that's what i've got to do um find a way to fit the egr valve and start the engine hopefully put everything back in i've got a few intake pipes off here uh, the intake valve as well so yeah we're gonna go ahead and do that how can you explain that still have the full there drivetrain you can continue driving now is amber it changed to amber when let me put the ignition on, on here so we bring the foot back uh when i removed the agr valve obviously it's fully extended and that's when i noticed this message now change to to amber and we've got a different sort of like message on the dash now how can you explain that i've still got drive train fault got insta here and it's all green it's a green tree right and then obviously i've been messing about with this so we've got our control unit list there they're all green again uh can't display any fault cause because there isn't uh, on a system so what i've been trying to do is going through this function extract is structure and obviously the fault that we had the, the old tail is to do with the intake so intake port suiting and again it gives me a message there's no fault cause stored uh for the tested functional component group so if you continue um, you can actually test different systems and and I've done a few of them, but a few of them actually fails because obviously the car's in leap mode, it doesn't rev up more than 3000. So it's a bit of a, you know, I've got start engine and most of them pass, but some of them fail because of the, the rev um, is limited to 3000. Now, another thing that I just noticed as well, if you go to the actual unit itself so we've got the dde there so call out pcu functions right so here's where you can put all the live data and also you can obviously do the call component triggering but it's basically bi-directional control or whatever so the identification one thing that i've noticed because i've got a feeling this is a software issue here now the owner of this car swears that nothing's been done to the car you know it has not it doesn't have a different map it doesn't have nothing like that and she has the car for about three years uh, if you look here you have the production of the car the year programming date 5th of january 23 so surely something was done to it uh is you responding properly uh pt can so that i've been looking at that i'm thinking something not right here i don't know if i've got all the functions here but uh yeah i've done the, all the adaptations all the adjustment that you can do uh reset adaptations and everything else and and it's oh, that doesn't go away engine light is always on so 
I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm really puzzled and I'm thinking it's going to be, it's got to be a software issue. Right, anywho, that's where we are at. Uh, I did speak to the guy to do a software update on this. Uh, but I cancelled on Friday because I was pretty confident when I saw that I could pull cords with the hotel. I, I was pretty confident I was going to find something. But so far, nothing, no joy at all. So, I mean, what do you guys think? I mean, having this car, it was stored here from London, right? Half disassembled. We put it together because we, if we had that mechanic issue, we wanted to, to hear it, to hear the engine run or cranking, or if you run, it run badly, we could, you know, figure something out. But uh, the car didn't start. So we assembled the car back in, didn't have valve covers, you know, main looms disconnected. Put it back together. The car would crank, no start, but very uneven cranking uh, that you could tell there was lack of compression, right? So came on the back of the... Uh, Tow truck we couldn't never saw the car running before the owner of the car swears she never had that issue again the story kind of i don't know how you know the car was fine um and then one day it just didn't start um and when it, when it got here we yeah we, we could tell there was uh, lack of compression, a couple cylinders, and opening the engine. Yeah, we could see there was burn valves. Right, replace the valves that was bad, reset them all, and the car now starts absolutely beautiful. You know, on a key, on a button, no issues at all. And then we get this message, right, which various come to no photo codes, which is weird. And I'm find, finding that really puzzling. Um, the only thing that it explains is a software issue because if you, you know, all the faults are for the intake and Simon left me um, a comment yesterday. I did go through EOBG as well. Uh, and the fault that we have there is for insufficient EGR flow. But... I've never seen that fault when the car is not, engine is not running, you know. Uh, how are you going to calculate the sufficient uh, flow when you just put the ignition on? So to me, that doesn't make sense either on the EOBG. So anywho, uh, that's where I'm at. So I think I could probably do a software update here, but I don't really trust trust myself to be fair because i've never done it and uh, things can go wrong so i'm probably going to get a professional it's pretty cheap anyway uh to do a software update reflash the issue whatever uh it's very suspicious that we got a date there for january when this person this owner of the car swears that nothing was done to this car and clearly i mean unless the figures that are wrong um Yeah, and I don't have much time with this car because it's bank holiday Monday today and at the moment it's 10 to 11, 10 to 11 p.m. So I really wanted to get this sorted out this weekend. I had a couple of days in this car. I worked a few hours and that's what we well, that's what we got. I want to get to a conclusion for you guys and myself as well, but uh, hopefully... This woman leaves the car here this week, hopefully. And I, obviously I've got my job. Um, I can't work here during the day. I'm, I'm only here, so like, in the evenings uh, and the weekends, generally. So, anyway, guys, thanks very much for watching. Hopefully we get, get a conclusion uh, or closure to this issue here. Uh, and I think the, the next step is to get this guy to do a uh, software update and it goes from there because I, I can't explain what's going on apart from software 
um, issue. All right, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.